Athlete Leader Podcast again. Cruz Arhus, thank you so much for coming on, brother. I appreciate you coming. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I I appreciate the uh, the invite, man. I'm a big well, fan. Yeah, thank you. That's nice of you to say. But I don't know that this is going to be so. So we one of the things that we try to do on this on this podcast is is break down the the processes, like the 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 checklists that must the boxes that must be checked in order to accomplish something. And when you and I talk, it, it is not always sunshine and rainbows when it comes to this sport. And and, and I want people to know that maybe this this will it, it, at, in times this will be a heavier episode. Um but but I think that there's a lot of things that you and I speak about privately that that we should speak about publicly. And but before we get to any of that, can we just get a little bit of an origin story on you there, Cruz? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I also I also agree, though. I think that hopefully some of the things we get into today are um, uncomfortable, but also necessary to start addressing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my so my origin story, uh, born into it. Right. Um, my dad wrestled in high school. He. uh he got, I think he only placed one time, but he ended up going to Kirkwood. He was a junior college All-American and then um, met my mom at the University of Iowa, um, you know, fell in love, had a kid. And then um, I think somewhere in my house, I've got my first pair of wrestling shoes I ever owned. And they are, I mean, they're baby shoes. They baby are shoes. actual baby shoes. So, I was born into it, um, how, but it looks much different when I was growing up than it does now, right? So um, I only did one tournament a year, and it was our local tournament through fourth grade. Fifth grade um, was my first year, like, really competing. I did our local district state scene for the first time. Uh, didn't qualify, um, but that was when my dad was kind of like, hey, if this is something you really want to do, like, you know, I've been a coach for a long time. I can help you actually like start to achieve some of these things. And, um, you know, that was the first time I realized I actually had a choice, you know? Um, but yeah. I was like, I was like, yeah, this is like, you know, um, our relationship was always good. It was solid through this whole process. So I was like, absolutely, man. Like, I, I, this is what you did. We have a good relationship centered around it. Like I'm completely in. So, um, you know, sixth grade year wasn't very good still, but then I made a pretty big jump from sixth to seventh grade year, ended up having a really good year. Um, and then I walk into high school, 85 pounds. So I go through this freshman year of just only suffering. I mean, only suffering. I'm losing to kids that I used to beat because they're 15, 20 pounds bigger than me. I've got to figure some things out. Um, it forced my hand to commit to a level that Maybe I wasn't quite mature enough for, but had to adapt to. Um, and then, you know, I end up staying pretty small, but I end up walking on at you and I having a enjoyable, um, definitely less than I planned, but um, very positive experience through my five years at you and I was lucky enough to um, have Doug Schwab kind of like really put a bunch of faith in me. He let me wrestle for four more years after college. I was involved with the RTC for a long time. Um, and then I got a great opportunity to start coaching kids and I took it and there's been literally like, this is all I care about um, outside of my family. So I'm pretty fortunate to be one of the few people in the sport who actually gets to spend all of their time focused on wrestling. I remember being a club owner in by the way, in case you don't know, uh, Cruz runs Immortal Wrestling Club uh, in Cedar Falls. Um, just give them a shout out and a plug. But um, to our millions upon millions of fans out there, right, Joel Shaw? <laughs> um, well, I remember being a club owner in Jersey. And at the time, I think it was less than 10 people across the country were like me and they were able to really make their living coaching wrestling, not at a major institution. 
that number has grown significantly in the last 20 years since I've, you know, not been a club coach, but it's still a pretty small number. It's a pretty tight knit community and it's a very short list of people that can make their living coaching wrestling, um, not at the university of Iowa or, or you and I, or whatever. Um, how does that feel? What do you feel any pressure by that? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, but actually, uh, this is something I talk to our kids about all the time. Like, I think there are three things you have to have to be, um, competitive in whatever you're doing. And one of them that we talk about a lot is you have to have something to prove. And, um, I like that. Right. I like, like, I call that like the MJ X factor. You have to have something to prove. Um, you know, people talk about like when he really made jumps or they would challenge him and he would turn it into like, okay, now it's on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so this is like my thing, like, uh, this isn't a normal career path. This is not a, um, Oh, you ain't telling me nothing, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm fully supported by my parents, you know, but, um, even my dad, like, I don't think, you know, I don't think many dads are like, yeah, man, be a club coach, you know, like, uh, he's like, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. So, um, yeah, I'm not trying to give him the middle fingers and like that, but you know, it's still in the back of my mind. Like I'll prove to you as well. Like I can, yeah. I can do this. This is, this is capable. I can support my family. I can, you know, um, make a difference in people's lives. I can do all of this stuff and it can be directly tied to the thing that I am super passionate about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not an easy road to go down. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the, Hmm. How do I start this? Let's say as a segue, the, the number of club coaches that do this professionally and are not just playing daddy ball has grown because of that. We're seeing more professionalism in coaching at a youth level, uh, high school level, but we ain't there yet. Cruz. We ain't there yet. <laughs> no go ahead no. you go right ahead sir Al. you take that ball and run with it yeah um not at all but i i do kind of want to throw a disclaimer out here before we get into this because yeah. what we're talking about is still a small percentage it's this is not um and, and what i mean by small is it's less than majority mm -hmm. um you know so boy this um yeah uh the sad thing is is that I'm hearing about it more too with the introduction of the girls high school wrestling. All right. So let's, let's start, let's talk, let's put our, our, our finger on the nose of what we're talking about. There's um, there are YouTube accounts. There are websites that are dedicated solely to exhibiting youth wrestling in a sexual manner. Agree. It's undeniable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and it's, first of all, in your opinion, how did we get here? Second of all, how do we identify it when we see it? Third of all, what are we going to do about it? Cause something has to be done. Cause it's not good. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not good. But it's, so it's so like long story short, I think that as a society, we were not prepared for the internet. Um, you mean you mean as as the American society or as the uh, as the as global, the wrestling community at the yeah. global society? Um, okay, but but I also think that like um, it is important to remember that the internet did start off as a seedy place. Um, right. You know the things that got popular on the internet first were not. <laughs> it wasn't Facebook. Um, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't cat videos. Yeah. No, uh, no, I'm with you. Not at all. I'm well, with different you. kind of cat videos, but yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I see where we're going with that. Well yeah. played, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but they were beheadings. They were. There was. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was gnarly. It was. Uh, it was gnarly stuff. Yeah. Um. Boy, man. Yeah. I, I actually. Uh, so I mean, internet was new when I was young, but I remember like seventh grade getting exposed to one of those websites, and it was. Yeah. I mean you know, seeing like horrific car crashes or, 
um, some of the more X-rated things. Like that's what the internet kind of or originated as. And then, um, well, it got, it got taken over by that. Right. It obviously didn't, wasn't intentions. Um, but man, I, I think that, um, I think what we're talking about is the same thing that people right now are talking about with AI, right? Mm -hmm. Like the technology is, is, is so much further advanced than some of the rules we have in place or that we're even prepared to handle that um, the unintended consequences are so detrimental. I don't know how to, without, without really sitting down and thinking about them for a long time, I don't know if they're, any way to freaking plan for it right mm. um and nobody's gonna sit down and think about it for a long 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 time no. everybody's got a job to do and everybody's got a life to live and everybody's got things to do and i think that that i think that that is how wrestling got here so i i, I want to bring it back to wrestling yep because it, we're we're a sport of volunteers for the most part Oh yeah. We're governing body 80% volunteers. Yep. So when when something like this slips through the cracks, there's no safeguard in in place because everyone has a job like they got to go home to their wife and kids and they got to go back to their life and they got to well yeah i don't have time to like check creds on everybody for sure but now here we are yep and i don't even know the, the cat's name we should call him out if we do because it's a shitty scummy thing that he's doing he's taking video and pictures and i don't know how else to explain it but illicit type of websites are picking them up and he's putting them on his youtube page and it's being exposed as very mild forms of child pornography and that's what it is okay and it's it has to be addressed because it is in our sport it's fucking gross dude it's fucking gross and like i guess aside from the fact that we've that we're just a a, a room full of volunteers as a governing body, as, as the police of this thing, how else did we, how, how did this come to happen? Because I don't know that we're, I, I don't know. I don't know that we can put the genie back in the bottle here. Right. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't think we can. I think it's very evident that there's a market for it okay. and that market's going to find it. Um, and whether, so like to me, like uh, it doesn't matter if that was your intentions or not. Um, look, man, we all know how YouTube accounts work. You can block people. You can hide mm. comments. You can, you know, you can definitely be, um, you can get accounts banned. You can report them. Like there's, there's plenty of stuff you can do to prevent this from spreading, mm. right? And at the very least, even if it wasn't your attention at the very least you liked your ad revenue enough to turn an eye to it. And mm -hmm. that's complicit. I mean, you're, you're completely complicit there. Um, sure. you know, it's no different than not saying something when you walk past a dad beating his kid up after a match, right? You have to say something that's otherwise you're complicit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I, th I think that's kind of like where we're at with, with some of these individuals is that, at a certain point, they were wrestling media, right? Like independent wrestling media. And they just allowed their brand to run its own course. And um, they and catered, they, Oh, you they think, oh, okay. It. Okay. I see what you're saying. So you don't. I, I, I'd be, I'd be hard pressed to think that if you didn't, unless you knew the market existed, unless you absolutely knew the market existed, that their intentions were this uh were to place high school boys or youth boys or high school girls or whatever on purpose into sexually suggestive positions and then benefit from that on the internet mm. um however 
they were there were no adjustments made once they found out that this is what was being used for. And I in see. fact, then I think maybe double down. Double down. I see. Does yes. that make you more scum, scummy? Because you're not even into that, and then you're doubling down on it. What a scumbag! Like you're capitalizing on it. I don't know. Maybe it is isn't worse, but it it feels like. Well, either way, you made that decision, right? Either way, you made that decision to to go in. So whether it was your intentions at first or you just doubled down on it later, it doesn't really matter. You you made the decision, right? Like you're equal parts very Mm. much to blame for this. Mm. Um, And it's actually actually really hard to think about, Um, especially when I have young kids who I hope, you know, participate in the sport. And then we also, I mean, I take kids to tournaments all over the country, right? Like it's always in the back of my head, like, geez, man. What if there's, yeah. What if there's a, a, some, some guy that looks innocuous enough sitting mat side with a camera? Yeah. You know, so how do we vet these people? How do we vet these people? Is it like, cause see, see, here's, here's the problem. The problem is, value some in 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 my brain a lot of it has to do with value value in wrestling is either the highest level okay or there's obviously value in this right like somebody is asking for this so how do we vet them at a youth level because like there's no such thing as like applying for media credentials. There's no such thing as safe sport. There's no such thing nope. as at, at these youth tournaments. There's no such thing as this stuff. So how do we vet these people on a local level? Like how, like how do we do this? Uh, that's a, well, I mean, that might be a million dollar question right there. Right. Um, especially when everybody's got a phone in their pocket. Um, no shit. You know, you got, a, you got a 4K camera in your pocket at all times. Yeah. Oh, and you can just put it. I mean, you can even get stuff now that you just put in your hat, walk around and record. Yeah. I mean, um, I I think, you know, I it's it only seems like it like there's only it seems like there's only a freaking like one option here is that you have to catch them, and then they have to be publicly ostracized. And I know that's hard because, um what law is actually being broken other than like morally, this is the most corrupt thing ever. So, um, Mm -hmm. you know, cause right. Like you call a guy out and then it's like, you know, what laws they actually break. And now you're facing a like defamation lawsuit. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you're facing a lawsuit, you know? Well, we can, I mean, it's just, you, sh- you can't protect bad people, but also, you know, thanks to some people inside the community, they're doing a really good job of like keeping tabs on some of these guys, um, you know, and they'll send ADs things or whatever. But that's been one of the frustrating things to me is like, um, I know messages have gone out, but people just aren't checking them. Can you, can, can you give me instances? I know you don't have to give me the names, but can you give me an instance of like, Hey, I know that this, this institution was. Yeah. So, um, I should have, I should have asked these people. Um, but let's just put this. There are two people inside the wrestling community. I should have asked them if I could say their name, but I'll, you know, right. but let's say in the state of Iowa, right. There's, there's a guy from the state of Iowa who's doing this. Um, YouTube. Let's be clear. Let's be very clear. That is taking suggestive photos and videos of kids and putting them on the internet. Yeah. Yep. High school kids for sure. Um, college athletes as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, definitely high school kids. I mean, mm-hmm. we're talking about very random, very random local high school matches racking up 50, 60,000 views on YouTube, right? Like this is, I mean, these are world championship final numbers, right? Yeah. Why is why is this, you know, so, um, but I know for, for a fact, message was sent out to every SID at every college and then every AD at, in, at every high school in the state of Iowa. Don't let this guy come to your events. Here's exactly why. Here's our proof. 
like yada 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 xyz xyz this this was this was two years ago this year still he's getting access to high school and college dual meets and events and all kinds of stuff Mm. so um you know without do, do we really have to get in our car and drive to every single program and be like don't let this guy in don't let this guy in don't let this guy in you know um or can people just you know check, check their, their email, email. Check especially their email especially with the header that was associated with it i mean i'm sure i'm sure it wasn't uh i'm sure it was eye catching especially knowing the people who sent them um yes. <clears throat> all right short of lynching these folks uh short of that even short short of that how do we protect ourselves from this how do we you meant you know you and i were going back and forth on text and um you said something about like we got to get rid of the singlet yeah i it, i that's a good place to start and why we're so married to it. Why are we so married to this piece of fabric? Like, what is going on? I don't know. And it is interesting that we're actually more uncovered today than we were when the sport started. 100%. They had leggings and they had, you know, I mean, yeah, like yeah. 100%. Um, I'm not sure, though. I, I am. I actually like what the um, that Russian league is doing where they have like the cutoff T-shirt and the shorts. Yeah. Um, is it what's that called? Like, is it called the the PFL or something yeah, like that? What is it over? Like I know. Yeah. yeah, I like that look. Um, I'm very pro two piece. Uh, I like what jujitsu is doing. I think it makes a lot of sense. But I mean, you know, jujitsu is also a little different. It's mainly dominated by adults, and um, right. they have accepted how goofy their sport can be sometimes. Um, mm. But again, their adult scene is much bigger than their youth scene um but man some of the pictures that get out there you're just like how could you ever post this right but then i think the other thing too is like why can't there has to be a little bit of education here or at least a little bit of responsibility from some of these governing bodies where it's like hey maybe don't post a picture with a kid's like just you know the shadows where they are Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah. like like you know that's a case. Hey, by the way, this, you know, it's funny, man. And, and this is a, a, I'm going to tread lightly. Um, I'm training women for the first time in my life. It's, it's a very new thing to me. It's a very, yeah. very new thing to me. I've never, you know, I didn't have any at all in Jersey um, when I left and then Texas one or two, but not really. But now I have like, I have full-time athletes that like, these are my dudes and they're, they're my dudes. And these girls are, they're into it. Right. Their, their dad did not grow up wrestling. Yeah. Okay. So he buys what the team tells you to buy and he should, you know, I mean, like this is, this is okay. This is the team gear. Team gear is white. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I go, hey, man, we have to have a conversation right now. And it's going to be a weird one. Yep. Okay? Can't just wear anything under that. Okay? You have to wear specific things. I don't know what they are, but you better ask her. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Ask the other girls on the team. Yeah. For, and, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know every reason why either. I'm just told that this is a conversation that needs to be had between you and I right now. But if it was fight shorts and a rashy... I probably don't have to have that conversation. Nope, not at all. Am I crazy for saying that? No. And actually, um, so we have a we have a lady in the Iowa USA um like board. Her name's Charlotte. Um she's opened my eyes to a lot of stuff that um I'm you know, male, 34 years right. strong. Yeah, just no, dude, no grew idea. Up a dude. All yep. I know is dudes, yep. right? Because we grew up training dudes. Go ahead. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she said the same thing, like about the Fargo thing that she was like, you know, we have to have gray. We can't do white. Um, you know, and I was just like, why would that matter? And then she's like, 
she mm-hmm. like looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, yep. Charlotte, I have, I'm sorry. Like, excuse my ignorance. I have no idea. I go, but right. you know, that makes a lot of sense now that you say that. So, um, yeah, there are, there have been a lot. We have, we have, uh, we started our girls program last year and there were a lot of things I learned this summer, um, on accident, but yeah. so glad I learned. And then, yeah. you know, also lucky to have some female coaches around that, you know, have opened our eyes to some things too, but sure. Um, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I, I wonder, I don't know. I wonder if, and I think you said it in the, the opening of the podcast is like the problem that we're facing is going to get worse. The more women we have in the sport, I would assume. Oh yeah. But I think, I even think right now, so not just a picture thing. I think even right now, the sport is a, tr- so there aren't a whole lot of high school guy coaches who want to coach women. Right. Right. And I, th- um, I think some of those roles are being filled by guys who aren't prepared to coach women and some wildly inappropriate things are happening because of that as well. Mm. You know, can you give me an example? I know again, we're going to keep names and stuff out of it, but yeah, yeah, for sure. I, uh, so just two of the, just two of the stories that um, are like confirmed, but um, still secondhand, right? Like, sure. uh, it, like one one of the coaches inviting a girl over to his house to watch film. Mm. You, you cannot, you cannot no, do that. You can't do that. You can't ever do that, right? Mm. Um, you know, and then a coach having a super inappropriate snapchat relationship with a girl you cannot do that right like um you know like how about this i won't text them at all i won't like i will text dad hey can you please let so-and-so know he's like you have her number i'm like (laughs) that's first of all that's ridiculous i don't and second of all no, this is going to go through you, dad. Don't you get that? Like, hey, stupid. Like, and, and not that he's stupid. He's not stupid. That's For not sure. that's not what I mean by that. Yep, yep, but yep. It's, it. But in his brain, it's like, you're not seeing this, bud. Like, you're not seeing this. Like, no. this could this could go all the way bad. Absolutely. Like, one, one wrong word. And I, I try to pride myself on being as like, by the book on this stuff as possible. Um, but there, but you're right. There's not, not everyone is like you and I in that regard. No. And, and, you know, I, so when we first started, we only had like one or two girls every once in a while. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and if they wanted to come in and like do work, I always told them you have to bring somebody who can watch. And, Mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, I got a question one time and they're like, well, why? Like, are you worried about, and I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm protecting your athlete. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, this protects me too. But at the end of the day, like I'm protecting your kid. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, this is a practice that you need to put in place. Like, yes, it protects me. But at the same time, like, don't go, don't let your 16, 17 year old daughter just go wrestle with a, (laughs) with a a guy that you trust because the title is coach. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's probably a pretty low barrier for entry. Just uh, he gets the title and all of a sudden he's a trusted individual. Okay, right. fine. But yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. So singlet should probably go, but what? here's the problem, dude. Like we're so married to it. Yeah, like given our choice, my high school boys who are ranked number four or five in the country, depending upon who you ask, are going to wear singlets. Yeah. Okay. And if they're ranked number four or five in the country, who do you think the kids in town look up to? Absolutely. Okay. And so if they look up to them and they not only wear singlets when they compete, but they wear singlets during practice and they, and, and then they got the cool singlet. Like we got a fuck, we got a kid that has a Japanese singlet. And it's yep. dope. I'm like, I'm not gonna lie. It's dope, <laughs> right? Like it looks cool. It looks super cool. And then we got another kid that has, you know, Muskaya's Hungarian singlet that he won in. Not the actual one, but yep, yep, that yep. one. You know what I mean? And that's dope. 
how do we fight it? So how do we go, hey, we got to go, like, we just sanction it? Yeah, I mean, I think the choice has to be removed. But I think at this point, you should just assume that creep creepy people are looking at your kid. Mm. You should just assume. So then when you, like, like, I there's there's for sure there is a dad out there who has told his daughter you cannot wear that out in public and then taken her to a wrestling tournament. Oh, 100 percent I've done it. Okay. I've, I've done it. I, like, I, like I've done it with my daughter. Yeah. I've been like, you ain't wearing that. What are yeah. you crazy? Yep. And then there I go. Well, I didn't, she doesn't wrestle, but you get the point though. I have yes. a daughter to, to, to an event. Yeah. Right? It, and um holy not, shit. I never even thought about that. You would never let your daughter go out and you wouldn't let her go to school wearing her singlet. Never. But run around in it all day at the tournament, wrestle other girls in it, and then have people you don't know taking pictures of it. Um, I just heard the, about a TikTok that went around of some girl wrestlers and somebody remixed it and they were like, um, basically like, like the screen's cut in half. Right. And they were uh, basically like assaulting this chick while she was wrestling. Right. Mm-hmm. Like uh, with sexually suggestive um, motions. Mm-hmm. Right. Got like, it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. So I'm, I'm legitimately, just like here's the choice you're faced with as a parent don't assume it's not going to happen to your kid right assume it is happening to your kid what do you want to do about it that that that's like legitimately kind of where i'm at with it you know um offer the two piece assume that your kid is on that site Mm. yeah i guess you kind of have to huh uh, yeah, and I don't think. Look, I don't think this is a strictly wrestling thing. Uh, no, I but, know but for that's sure the, volleyball that's deals with it. Really? Uh, oh oh duh. yeah, yeah, duh. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, swimming has to sure. on both sides. On both sides, sure. Boys and girls, uh, gymnastics for sure. And the gymnastics one is probably closer to what we're dealing with because that you go to the Olympics and you're watching 16, 17, Children. 15, Children. 14 year old girls. Children with hundreds of millions of eyes on them Mm. okay all right well the 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 process has to be better and and look here's the thing i'm not i'm not calling out usa wrestling because they are trying to eradicate this like it's not like they are sweeping this under the rug like like gymnastics knew that there was yes. egregious, egregious assaults on young women and they swept it under the rug. That is not what USA wrestling is doing. So, no. that, so, but it's obviously not quite as egregious. Um, however, we have to police our own. Yep. We have to police our own. We have to, we have to. And we have to do it immediately. You know, what would you say to a high school college athlete or a young coach that go, well, if they if they don't want to wear a singlet, then they're probably not good enough for the sport anyway. Um because you know that they're, they're out there, right? Like you know yeah. that those cats are out there, right? Yeah. Okay. That um what a weird I would be really taken aback by that. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure what I would say. That would, that would really catch me off guard. Cause my thing is like, uh, nobody's winning because of the singlet. Nobody's losing because of the singlet, right? Like mm-hmm. um, you don't practice, you don't, your high school, like I'll walk into your high school practice room. Show me the, show me all of the kids the day before a dual meet in their practice and in their singlet. No. Or, no. I mean, e- even like uh, culturally, right? Like you kind of start to police it. Like imagine if you're at the NCAA tournament and, um, you know, who's who's the who's the best wrestler in college this year? Aaron Brooks. Aaron Brooks spends the entire tournament walking around in just his Penn State singlet. 
<laughs> yeah, everybody be like, dude, what is going on here? Hey, this man. is so weird, mm. right? Hey, but, double knee pads. Yeah, he does yeah. have double knee pads, by the way, which drives me crazy. Go ahead. <laughs> he, he can, you know what, though? What are you going to say? He, he, <laughs> fair enough. You make a solid point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, that's actually the point that I made to my, my son. My son and I are watching Penn State duel last two nights ago, whatever, last week, whatever. And he goes, uh, He's going double knee pads, huh? I'm like, you going to tell him to do otherwise? Right, <laughs> He's right. like, uh, no, probably not. Probably not. Oh, he could he could go two knee pads and two elbow pads, and I'd still be like, he's good. <laughs> he's pretty good at wrestling. He pass. Pretty- he gets a pass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Um, There are some other things that I wanted to talk to you about, um, and, and they're not quite as heavy, right? So, like, the I, all right, folks, you can take your – white knuckles off the steering wheel now and you can you can kind of take a breath because you know while the the problems aren't fixed at least they're out in the open more than they were 30 minutes ago yeah i I will say this that uh if anybody listen i'm happy to be a middleman i can put people who are dealing with these issues in contact with people who are willing to help um Mm -hmm. so if anybody if anybody's dealing with some something along these lines and you're unsure of what to do, I will help you get in contact with the people who can help. Okay. How do they get a hold of you? Or just find me on Instagram is the only, is is the only way I'm not checking. I don't have Twitter. I'm not checking Facebook. So Instagram uh, it's, it's cruiser 55. I believe I can check real quick. I'm so, but yeah, cruiser 55. Spell it. Um, C R U S E R 55. Mm-hmm. Shout mm-hmm. out to the 55 kilo days. Oof. 55 Sad boy. kilo. 121. Sad boy. 121 Sad boy. pounds. Oh, Sad boy. Jeez Louise. Okay. Um, 55 kilos. Yeah. Who's last 55 kilo rep? Um, I Wait. think it was it was right before the Olympic year, wasn't it? Did it move before or after it? I think it was I, after. I think it was 13. I, I I know there was that little stretch where we had um, Escobedo uh-huh. made it and got fifth. Yeah. And then I think that next year um, was the Olympic year. And I think who was the Olympic rep that last time? 2012. Yeah. Hayes. Yeah. Hazel. Hayes. I think yeah. Hayes was the last one. Cause I, Jeez. no, 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 no. Cause 20, it, it changed. Was that 57 it, or 55? That was 55 because it changed before the Olympic year. It went 57 before the Olympic year because that um, I remember being in Vegas, cutting weight for the U.S. Open, and I shattered. And I called Randy Pugh and I said, hey, I'm not making weight. I'm done with this, right? Like I was like maybe maybe two kilos over the morning mm-hmm. of. I go down there. I start working out. I'm just killing myself. I watched – four or five guys come in for like 30 minutes, make weight and they're out. And I'm just dying. I'm like, I'm done. I was like, if you don't get to this sauna right now, I'm not making weight. And then I looked him in the eyes and I said, I'll never make 55 kilos again. This is my last time. Well, it ended up being my last time because they changed the weight. Like right after that. Yeah. So it was in between 12 and 16. I want to say like 2014, 2015. Yeah. I thought it was 13, but yeah, you might be right. It could have been 2013. Yeah. Right after the Olympics, but yeah. Anyway, I'm sad boy. Yeah, and that's miserable. Fifty five, and 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 I, if I'm going to be honest, I don't know that we need a fifty five kilo. I mean, no. fifty seven. Excuse me, fifty seven kilo. I don't know if we need a fifty seven kilo. I don't know that no. there's too many grown dudes well, out there. That was it, man. I had a really hard time convincing myself I was a like bad motherfucker who weighed 121 pounds. Yeah, that's it's, just that it's pretty sense. conflicting. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> pretty conflicting. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point that's a uh, yeah that's the whole thing right like we're <clears throat> will there be some asian countries that would be really upset with us if we banned or raised the the weight to 59 maybe don't care though like yeah and i think the only argument you could make to keep it is that they don't go through college so they have 18 year olds wrestling on their world and Olympic team. Sure. You know, and you could make an argument that there are a handful of 18 year olds out there. Sure. You know, like you put, you put Luke Lillydahl at a 
120 pound weight class, he's probably ultra competitive. Sure. But at the same yeah. time, we're talking about a kid. Yeah, we're talking about a child, right? Like he's a teenager. Yeah, that's a that's a solid point. I just don't I just I don't see a need for it anymore. You that's know, what I'm I saying. Just, I, I think that's the only argument you can make for sure, it. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Um there to me, there are other aspects of this sport that really need to change. And that PL hat that you're wearing is a big voice in the change. Um so if there's one aspect and and like we're not even getting to the like the magic wand question yet like i, I don't even want to get there right but like I, like this is those are kind of goofy questions and when i say goofy i mean yeah, the other fun but they're fun because there's no recourse right a magic yeah. wand question is is nice and it's fun because you wave a magic wand and something just appears. Well, the real world doesn't work like that. We we have to work for things to change in our sport. So over the course of the last, let's call it 40 years, right? Because Ernie Monaco started the edge in 84, 86 or something like that. And so over the course of that time, between now or between 86 and now the professionalism in coaching at a youth level has raised dramatically the the, the amount of money in the sport with kale getting a million dollar deal has gone up significantly the amount of exposure because of things like espn right? Like every single match is on some form of ESPN, the NCAA tournament. If you would have told me that when I was a kid, I'd have told you you were crazy, yeah. right? Like I, I, like I would have said, no, there's no way that ESPN is <clears throat> not just making a humongous spectacle of the finals, which they do and they do a great job of, but every single match, every match I get to watch the blood. I get to watch the blood rounds. What? Okay. So there are there, uh huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pigtails, I gotta call over for, for pigtails. They're that's badass, right? It is okay. That said, in what areas do we need to focus our attention and our effort right now? Youth level, high school, college, what, whatever. You tell me what areas of the sport need to be focused on. So, okay, so this is gonna be a little hot take to start. Love it. I think that so because this will this will preface like everything. I think wrestlers can get into the sport of wrestling and wrestle year round really young. Mm -hmm. If okay, now this is if, right? And then these will be the two things. Weight, weight is handled appropriately, and training cycles are handled appropriately. Um, so I think that the two areas that can always use can always use um, greater understanding mm -hmm. is definitely, they all stem from education. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the biggest thing we have to continue to focus on is really trying to make sure that these professional coaches um, are educating themselves, right? The beauty of America, anybody can do whatever they want. Okay. The hard part of that is that we actually miss out on, making sure everybody's handling their stuff well um you can get you can get great six eight ten new results um by being very very hard very very demanding and forcing things on children and you can be incredible um but the war of attrition is a different thing right um or you're mortgaging the future yeah well, that's what I mean, right? So yeah. um, I have this conversation with parents all the time, right? They, um, listen, your kid becomes a freshman in high school, and then I don't know what happens. I haven't experienced it yet, but it changes a parent's outlook on things. Now we're talking about the future, right? And now everything matters. Where before we were getting better, okay, now we're 14 years old. We're freshmen in high school. Well, maybe 16 years old, freshman in high school. Sorry, times are changing. Um, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're somewhere in that age gap. Um, 
and and now how we do ultimately matters right and then parents want to just floor it like i try to remind him hey your kid told me he wants to be the best at this that means when he graduates high school he needs nine more years Mm. you do your five college and then you do four post-grad with your rtc they need nine more years they've only been wrestling for nine years Right. We're talking about a decade more of wrestling the day they leave me. I have to make sure they have that left. Right. So, well, what's going to carry you through 10 years? I went through those 10 years. I'll tell you what gets you through it. It's only, it's only caring about it and being around good people. Period. <laughs> Period. You are, you're not going to go through the things that this sport requires if to be great. Yes. Yes if you really don't care about progress and you're not around good people. Oh man. You, that is the, probably the best way I've ever heard it put. Honest to goodness. That is the most succinct and best way I have ever heard that put. Because when you put the label of damn near decade on it, Boy, that's a lot of time, especially to a high school boy, right? Or oh, girl. yeah. Okay, to them, like, that's that's the world. I mean, they haven't been alive, but for one of those and some change. Yeah. Right? So, so, the amount of time that you've spent on this earth, half of that, you now have to devote to this sport. Yes. Okay. Wow. That's well put. So... The other part you said was training cycle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think so hold, on, is... hold, hold on. Hold okay, on. Okay, now. Hold okay, on. Okay, okay. I, I need to preface this for a second. For those of you that don't know, I'm working closely with a, a brand called the Smart Fit Method, and this is not a plug for them. This is an awesome story. They have a machine. Cruz, you would geek out on this machine so hard. Now, I'm so fortunate to live in Southern California where like a lot of this AI adaptive resistance type of equipment is like at the forefront. It's called an ARX machine. <clears throat> an ARX machine uh, has, is think of a Nautilus machine. Yep. Okay. Legendary. Legendary, right? Started in Southern California, by the way. Okay. Anyway, the range of motion for a leg press only changes with your output. You got me? So yeah. the more you push, the more it pushes back. So you are getting an absolute positive full range of motion that is fully loaded. When you... Oh. Yeah. I got you. It's a yeah. perfect bell curve. It's a perfect bell curve. Perfect. So the the bottom of your rep, you are only you are you are getting as much resistance at the bottom of your rep as you are needed. Not how much it is, not 80 pounds, right? Could be 230. Could be but in the middle, everyone's strong in the middle of their rep. Okay. You're getting the most amount of resistance in that middle of the rep. And then when you're done with the rep, it hits you with an eccentric so it starts pushing back on you and you yep, have to yep. hold it and it is brutal now oh yeah now all that to say this when you become a member at smartfit method you get to log in and every time you come in all you have to do is walk up to the machine type in your name and all of your results come up all of them okay freaking cool right like data oh my god data that's crazy <laughs> that's nuts so jack my son um his wrestling season is pretty much over they have he, there's a senior at his spot and that's the way it is okay yep so guess what we're lifting again like let's go so in the mornings now don't get me wrong he lifted with his high school yeah, like yeah. Don't, please don't get me wrong like it's not like they neglect strength training completely Absolutely. They yeah. they 100 address strength. We have a great strength coach. His name is Seth Wren. He's awesome. <clears throat> However, I brought him back last yesterday morning. 
14% decrease in overall output because he's been in a wrestling room since October and hasn't left. Yep. 14% decrease in output, both eccentric and concentric. Yep. We're just okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think um, you're, you're, you're hitting on, I think what one is, was. So, so here's what, in my experience at the college level, here's what makes this super important. What you're talking about. You fill your strength coach position with a wrestler. Yep. Everybody does. Right. And I understand the value there because that guy can wrestle, right? Like it, it, there's a lot of value in that, but, um, I, I have actually been meaning to ask you about that because I saw you get on that thing a couple of times and I was like, what is this? Right. Like I was super like, you know, um, listen, I know we, this is probably an off air conversation, but we've talked about running camps out here. Yeah. Buddy. You come out here and I will put you on the machine and you are going to go, how do I figure out a way to get this? And it, they're very expensive. Please don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. They're very, <clears throat> very expensive. Okay. But, but th- if this isn't the path to the future of our sport, I'd be, I'd, I'd be a little bit upset about because like, this is so simple. Yeah. It's so simple. Yep. Yep. And that's what I think that is, um, you know, you talk to weightlifting purists, right. And they, they get a little, right. Um, if you talk to a weightlifting purist, they hate social media yeah. and it's because everybody on social media is trying to find a trendy or a less difficult way to like get stronger and stuff like that. Right. Sure. Um, what you're talking about though is blending technology Absolutely. with, with, with like appropriate um levels of resistance right yes the crazy thing is is uh and i'll give a shout out to the strength guy at you and i his name's jed smith um he's a combat guy he wrestled in high school he's a high school coach uh he was a coach for the minnesota wild for a couple mm-hmm. years um he put a program in front of me one time he's like it's the dan snyder in season lifting protocol you only have to lift twice a week and they you put guys on this they lift twice a week you have to touch between 70 and 100 percent of your rpe not mm-hmm. even percentage based numbers right and like um most guys will come out of that with less than a two percent decrease in strength through their season um the problem is is how do you get a guy who's 10 over to value lifting when all of them are associating lifting with getting bigger and it's just you know the the taboo nate the taboo parts of lifting and the actual um, proven, uh, benefits or results or whatever of lifting, they are just constantly hitting heads, hitting heads, hitting heads, hitting heads. So, um, man, educating, educating coaches specifically to where they can reply to these type of comments, um, appropriately, I think is just, is just missed in the sport right now. Yeah, It's just, it's no, just completely I missed. I agree. Um, you know, you, you could literally, I mean, you could do three lifts twice a week, three different lifts twice a week. And as long as you are like touching something kind of heavy for one, two or three reps, you'll hold your strength for a long time. The problem is what does wrestling strength training look like? Hammer curls and short range pull-ups. Yeah. We got to get the pump. We got to get yeah. the pump, right? Yeah. Like Rocky was doing better training than what some of our wrestling cohorts are currently doing. I agree. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you guys aren't chasing chickens. At <laughs> well, no. they might be in Cedar Falls. You don't know. We got a couple of guys that are for sure. Possums. <laughs> they love catching possums. Uh, you're not kidding. Are you Cruz? No, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> we have uh, possums and, and uh, sewer raccoons are, are, um, you just throw a cat trap out there. You'll catch a couple. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, but the, <clears throat> something has to change. With, For sure. With with um, the heavy stuff that we talked about earlier, um, with training cycles. I, why are we – I don't understand the point of wrestling season. I just don't understand it anymore. 
I'm sorry, we're shoehorning ourselves into an antiquated model. I don't think that we need a season. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why are we shoehorning ourselves into a football archetype, right? Like, or baseball archetype. The reason there's baseball season is because you can't do it all year round in most places other than the place that I live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what do baseball players do there? Huh? They, they play all the time. They play all year round. They play yeah. all year round. And sure. who's producing some of the best baseball players? Florida, Southern California. Yeah, for yeah. sure. 100%. Yeah, there's no question. But but why then do we have wrestling season? Uh, Well, so state of Iowa, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that we have going for us more than probably any other state is tradition. Sure. Right? Uh, The biggest threat to progress is tradition. Yeah. It is yeah. always the biggest threat to progress. Um, that's politics 101, mm -hmm. right? Like, so why do we have some of the things that we have? Because we've always done them that way. And getting somebody to, um, sorry, one, getting somebody to make a change in the face of that is so hard because you're, you're not just, you're not just looking at policy. You're looking at tradition all over the place. Mm. But I mean, our kids don't have a season. They they go wrestle three months for their high school and then the day after it's over, they're, you know, they're on a freestyle course. So, you know, they're wrestling year round anyway. Yeah. It's just is it smart to have 20 weigh ins in a three month period? That's the part I don't enjoy. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like he 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 spent the the year pulling himself down to 32. Yeah, which towards the end was not fun for him. Like oh, no. he's grown. He had that's... like he's taller than me now. Yeah, like, uh, I still whoop his ass. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, he's taller than I. Am. He's five nine. He's walks at 144. You know, he's wrestling 46 tonight. He's just going to wrestle 46. And... Yeah. Like, why? Uh, like, what are we, what are we doing? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a lot of, at least in Iowa, I get it a lot. Like, coaches are very upset with their schedule that their AD sets. But then I'm like, bro, your AD doesn't want to listen to you? Is that is that really the relationship you're telling me you have? Like, hey, AD, we want 10 weigh-ins this year. We don't want... 20. No, sorry. You don't know what you're talking about. You're just the coach. I'm the, you know what I mean? Like, is that the conversation that's happening? I don't think so. No, probably not. Uh, um, do we need 60 matches? I don't, yes. I don't think so. No, our, our a guys probably have 20 at the most. Yeah. Uh, 25 just, maybe by the time, the, by the time the postseason's over. Yeah, you guys are lucky too, though. You can go wherever you want. We're, we're, mm, or can yeah. you not? Well, we can, but yeah. we have to make sure that Wyoming Seminary. Or, you can't you know, prep schools. Pre yeah, yeah, preps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can't we can't do prep schools, but we also can't leave more than a state away. That's so, so. bizarre. Like that is so arbitrary. Yeah, so arbitrary. Like, yeah, you can wrestle Kansas, but oh, Idaho, no way, bud, no way. Yep. yep. Well, yeah, that's like the irony of it, right? So a Southern Iowa team could go all the way to the Canadian border. It's 14 hours away, but uh, they can't go to Michigan. They can't go to Indiana, which is six hours away. But you can go it's, all it's the way arbitrary. up to the north just, border. and Yeah. It's arbitrary. It's it's ridiculous. Okay. Joel Shaw, we got to get to these questions because we got to get out of here. Um, all right, Cruz. You ready? I'm prepared. You are? Are you really? I'm, I'm prepared, bro. I am you so ready. son of a ready. gun. Tony, Tony uh, Rotundo came in prepared as well. Um. I, I kind of like it better when they're not prepared, but okay, fine. Best wrestling shoe ever, ever, ever. Okay. Personal, right? Obviously yes. I'm not going to pick a shoe that I've never worn before. It is the, um, the a six ultra flex two black and silver. Oh, isn't that the one that you said you liked Joel? Uh, Supreme light fact. Oh, flex. right. You were the moon boot one. That's right. That's right. Yeah, see, I didn't like the moon boot, but, uh, I couldn't get over these things. I wore them three years in a row. They were my favorite shoe. Like I was so sad when they stopped making them. It just Velcroed, zipped, and then it was done. I mean, yeah. it was just perfect. 
I the, hate so tying my shoes. That's if fair. There's, I, if there's okay. anybody from ASICs who can get old shoes remade, please contact somebody on this podcast. And no doubt. Absolutely. No doubt. We will bring back the throwbacks. Um, the, the, the zipper never like got jacked up on yours. Mine will always get jacked up. No, mine, um, mine lasted. I was 80 pounds, 85 pounds wearing them though. So Fair it's enough. not like there was tons of, uh, not a lot zipper of force. stress. No, <laughs> no, not a lot of zipper stress. Fair uh, enough. Okay. They, they did though. That was like first Velcro scene though. Right. Yeah. Man, they would, they would cut people's arms up so bad. Yeah. You go a turn and kick out of something and that Velcro is just, I mean, you're, you're just starched. <laughs> All right. Um, let's do the magic wand, man. Magic I'm wand. I'm excited. Tell for me, this one. tell me, tell me, okay. tell me, what would you change? One thing about the sport. One thing about the sport. Okay. Now I'm like, how do we grow the sport? How do we grow the sport? How do we grow the sport? Gambling is the easiest way to put more eyes in the sport. Okay. But here's the deal. I'm not gambling on anything right now. Because one person makes the biggest difference in these duels, right? Mm. Last year, Spencer Lee doesn't wrestle. It's a 12-point swing in a duel. Yeah. Right? That's too big. That's so volatile, yeah. right? So I want mandatory injury reports, and I want lineup has to be set 24 hours before. Public. What does that cost you? It costs you nothing. Nothing. It costs you nothing nothing and then we have something to talk about right how many like you know you guys uh projections whiteboard wars whatever mm -hmm. you guys want to call it everybody does it and then the duel never looks like that so yeah. it's like why even tune in why even pay attention like hey fingers crossed hopeful this is what the duel looks like no put your freaking lineup out yeah give us something to talk about like how about this most coaches like when i when i call duels i'll generally i'm fortunate enough to have most of the coaches phone numbers and I'll just text them. Hey, can I get you the problems? You know, that like 25% of them are just like, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> you mean, okay. So <clears throat> you don't want me doing like, I'll guess I'll guess. And then I'll hope to be educated on your team when I'm right. commentating. It just, but, it, just it drives me nuts, man. Like the media oh, never knows what they're talking about. Well, yeah. Cause you guys don't tell anybody anything, right? Like, Everybody's got a job to do. We're going to put our best foot forward. We're going to make our best guess. And then you guys are like, oh, see, idiots. It's like, well, yeah, I am an idiot. Sorry, I had no idea you were going to sit your entire lineup tonight. <laughs> like, what What do you want from me? <laughs> so perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Rushmore. Who's on the Rushmore wrestling, brother? Okay. like I, So Mount Rushmore. Who's on the Mount Rushmore of like – the United States, it's only U.S. presidents. So I'm staying United States only. Got it. Um, okay. And then, so first one's Dan Gable. Got it. Cannot deny it. The impact is insane. Um, even even after Dan Gable retires, there's been six NCAA champion, like championship teams. Four of them have been coached by a Dan Gable guy, right? And then you could argue, you could argue that his influence on Kale Sanderson from Iowa state, him choosing Iowa state, right? Like his, the argument for this guy's influence is it's limitless, right? Sure. So it's no brainer. Okay. Obviously. Second one, it's Kale Sanderson. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going Kale. Uh, he's, he did something no one's done before and he's currently challenging the only other record that <laughs> means anything mm -hmm. in our sport. Right. Mm -hmm. um, plus he's changing college wrestling. 100 percent he's he's actually actively changing college wrestling the number of things that we're stealing from kale sanderson is insane like at iwc mm -hmm. third is uh jb he's yes. he's he's done something that no one's done before he's got seven, seven. goals seven okay. um i also think he has been he has been the best ambassador for the sport at a time when social media is blowing up um 100%. No controversy the entire time. He's a tremendous family man. Uh he held he held it down at Nebraska. He's holding it down in Philly. Um you know, he's had 
multiple opportunities to put wrestling in the forefront and he's used his success to do that. I don't think in terms of impact, you could ask for a better guy today no. No. than him. Okay, my now goal, my fourth one. Okay, fourth one. Sorry. Okay. No, I guarantee no one's put this guy on here yet. I'm listening. Okay, but again, I'm going for guys who were the first to do something in the sport that no one else has ever done. Okay. And he's a you and I guy. Okay. okay? Bill Cole. Bill Cole. Bill Cole. And here's why. Old Freshman Robs. Year. Yep. Rob's dad. Yep. Goes to the Iowa State Teachers College. Next year's drafted in the war. My guy goes over to Normandy, storms the beaches, whoops up on them Nazis, comes back home, three-time NCAA champ, first guy ever to win two OWs. Bill Cole. Pretty freaking like legendary, that. man. I like that, man. You know, he's an Olympic like fifth that. place. Olympic fifth place. He goes on and coaches at Penn State for – I think 14 years, 15 years has a really good dual record. Um, I just, I obviously his legacy through the sport too. Um, yeah. You know, the yeah, you and I Rob. rooms named after him. He, you know, Rob, it's crazy to call him Bill's son just because Rob is. Yeah. He's his own dude. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I just, uh, he was the first, he was, the, yeah. he was the, the first to freaking win uh, to what's now the Hodge twice right. and he's got a bronze star so um that's pretty dope yeah the story's awesome i freaking love it so i give a little shout out to you and i and put him on my freaking uh rushmore my rushmore i love it cruz thank you so much for coming through one more time how do people get a hold of you on instagram uh cruiser 55 on instagram um otherwise just corner me i might not look approachable but uh i got an rbf it's not it's not really like that it's just, it's just not like that no so, he's no i i agree with you yeah we're but don't come and talk to me because i am the opposite of that i've got <laughs> a very talkable face i just don't want to talk to you I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right thank you brother i appreciate you coming on and uh we'll catch up with you next time yeah man i appreciate it really do i think you guys are doing a great job so 